Prostate cancer statistics, a Gapminder video with Hans Rosling. Prostate cancer is most frequently reported from the United States of America. The size of the bubbles on this graph represent the number of men diagnosed with this cancer. You can also see that it's common in West Europe. Now to show you the risk of getting diagnosed, I have to move to another type of chart. Here, the bubbles are still the countries and the size is the number of men diagnosed. The vertical axis here shows the number getting prostate cancer diagnosis per 100,000 men and the horizontal axis is income per person. There's no direct relation between risk for prostate cancer and income. And beware, here there's may, been made the standardization for the age composition. So the rates of the different countries are compared to as if the age composition were the same in all countries. And look here, in Japan the risk of getting prostate cancer is much lower than it is in Australia, which has the same income. And the reason for that is that as far as research goes, the two major known causes for prostate cancer in men is high age and ethnic genetic background. There is a higher risk for this disease in men with Caucasian, European and North American origin and in men with African origin than it is for other, other population groups in the world. And there's another aspect also, and that is that this cancer exists in an aggressive form that requires immediate treatment, but also in, in, in more modest forms of cancer, which are not really causing problem for the patient. And it's difficult to know when to put the diagnosis and when to give the treatment. And the high rates in the United States may be due to some overdiagnosis. Look at this graph. Here I have on this axis still, I have the, um, per, the number of men getting prostate cancer diagnosis per 100,000 and I have on this axis the number of men dying in this disease. The size of the bubbles now correspond to the population size. United States have a very high risk of getting the diagnosis for prostate cancer, whereas the risk of dying is not so high. And this is what support the, the hypothesis that there is some overdiagnosis. Now, let me compare my own country, Sweden. Here we have data for Sweden and some few other countries for many years. And in 1958 in Sweden, there was a risk of 27 in 100,000 to get the diagnosis and 16 in 100,000 to die. That is the most half of the men with this diagnosis died. Now what has happened is that this is the change when we have annual statistic for prostate cancer. Today in Sweden, the risk of dying is about 20 per 100,000, eh? whereas the risk of getting the diagnosis is 91. Sweden have a similar development to the United States. Eh? And there may also be some overdiagnosis in Sweden, or it may be wise to overdiagnose this, this cancer. The researchers are standing at this point today. What we know is that it's extremely useful to have good cancer statistics from many countries so that we can compare and learn from each other. And that actually doesn't exist, not even for all rich countries. And the world is facing more and more cancer, so my personal view is that more resources should be put into collection and compilation of good cancer statistics.